We've all had an uncomfortable, upset stomach that we hope will pass, but what if there's more to it? Well, here to share the science of SIBO is our gut health guide, board certified gastroenterologist at Cedar sinai Medical Center, Dr. Mark Pimentel. Welcome to the show, Dr. Pimentel. Thanks, it's great to be with you today. All right, so this is a whole, this is something new for me. I'm, I'm going to learn along with the rest of our audience here. So, Dr. Pimentel, what is SIBO and how is it connected to IBS, which you also happen to be an expert on the topic? Yeah, well, SIBO is an acronym, and it stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. Uh, and basically what that means is your small intestine, which is the longest length in the middle of your gut where all the food is absorbed, shouldn't contain that much bacteria, but in SIBO, it's, the bacteria levels have gone way up. As a result, they start eating your food and producing symptoms. We know now that there's this connection between SIBO and irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome affects 45 million people, and we think up to 60% of irritable bowel syndrome patients suffer from SIBO. At least that's what the data suggests now. Tell us, what are the signs and symptoms of SIBO? 20 years ago, IBS used to be thought of and shamefully as a disease of women with anxiety and depression. And I've even heard it referred to as a disease of hysterical women, which is a terrible uh, reference. But things have changed dramatically now. But the symptoms are you wake up in the morning, your abdomen is relatively flat, you start eating food, feeding the bacteria, and then you start to get bloating and distension, and, and physically you will see your abdomen protrude. And then as a result of all of that, you can have abdominal pain, diarrhea, even constipation, depending on the type of SIBO that you have. All of us experience those, those signs and symptoms from, from time to time. How, how do you know that more is going on just than the normal amount of, of bloating and gas, et cetera. Are there tests and specific treatments that are available for SIBO? The best way to do it is a, is a breath test. Super simple, can even be done in your own home and you just inflate these bags over a period of two hours after drinking a sugar. But it's really important to figure out which gas you have. What does that mean? The bacteria produce gases after eating food and they can produce hydrogen, methane, or hydrogen sulfide, all of which humans don't generally produce. And so if you can measure all three gases, you can determine what type you have and then the treatment. But speaking about treatment, the, the primary therapy to get you started once you've had a positive test is antibiotics. You wanna get the bacterial levels down and then you wanna keep them down and that's sometimes where diet comes in after the initial treatment. What changes can our viewers make to their diets now, today, to ward off these SIBO symptoms? And we sort of call it low fermentation diet or low fermentation eating. You want to eat foods that humans digest. I mean, so things like fiber, things like legumes, things like non-absorbed sugars, which are the composition of many sweeteners that you use in your coffee and, and even now in a lot of sodas they use these. They have zero calories for you, but they're sugar for bacteria and the bacteria ferment it a lot. And that's when you get all these tremendous symptoms. So you have to be careful with your diet. But the other thing that people tend to self-medicate with is prebiotics and probiotics. And those can be really help helpful for some digestive conditions. But for SIBO, you already have too much bacteria. Adding more bacteria or fueling more bacteria as with a prebiotic Usually I find that patients can get worse. And so you have to be a little more careful if you're using probiotics in this condition. Well, you know, you're, you're coming up with this whole new SIBO versus IBS versus things going on uh, in the lower intestines and the colon. I mean, this, this involves uh, doing a little bit of differential diagnosis and, and consulting with an expert because as you alluded to the diet and the treatment for, for one may be a little bit different. You know, we, we encourage fiber and things like that for, for the large intestine where you're saying that potentially for the small intestine, it's gonna give you symptoms of SIBO. So uh, obviously you need an expert to sort through uh, what is best for you. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's ironic. We're saying no fiber or low fiber, where exactly. people think fiber is healthy. Uh, and, and it is healthy, but for SIBO patients, it's really difficult. And, and I sometimes tell my patients to eat white bread rather than whole wheat bread. But here's the thing, yep. a very nice French baguette, a very nice Italian loaf, those are white breads. You don't have to you know, get the basic white bread. You can go gourmet. Yeah, you're right. There are, there are better choices. Listen, doc, thank you so much. Dr. Mark Pimentel, you heard it here. We have to learn more about SIBO.